Okay, uh, it's 4.30. We want to call this meeting of the City of Tullahoma Planning Commission to order. Uh, and we will have a determination of the quorum. And I see we have at least four members here. So we are uh, at a quorum level. So we will hold the meeting. Um, and I'll ask uh, Pastor Tim if he'll come and lead the invocation and the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag before we start. Go and bow with me as we pray. Father God, we just want to pause here and say thank you. Thank you for this day. Thank you for health. Thank you for meeting all of our needs. Thank you for the rain. Thank you for always having our best interest at heart. Thank you for watching over us, for never taking a nap, for never taking a vacation, but always you've got your careful eye overseeing us, your protective hand under us. I pray for uh, this group tonight as they conduct business. Pray that you'll give them clear minds, that you'll give them wisdom, you'll give them discernment in how to uh, make decisions concerning the future. I pray for our wonderful city. Thank you that we are all citizens of it. And uh, we appreciate everyone that uh, makes this city the great city that it is. God them it tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Uh, if you give the committee a couple of minutes to look over the agenda for tonight and um, see if we have any additions or corrections or deletions. No additions or corrections or deletions from anyone? Then let's begin with the reading and approving of the minutes. We'll begin with the minutes for August 20th, 2018 on pages two and three. Move to approve. Second. I have a motion and second to approve the minutes for the August 20th, 2018 meeting as printed in the document. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, no motion passes unanimously now the September 17th 2018 meeting minutes if you will review those on page four and five motion to approve Second. I have a motion and second to approve the meeting minutes for the September 17, 2018 meeting as printed in the document. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, no. Minutes are approved unanimously. We will at this point move on to uh, reports of officers and staff. Uh, staff doesn't have reports, Mr. Chairman. No reports. We have no old business to take care of tonight, so we will move on to new business. Uh, we have no site plans to approve, so we will move on to section B, final plats. These will be public hearings. I will start, uh, I will allow time in every public hearing for people from the audience to speak. Before I open the first one on the first issue item one, I would remind everybody that in public hearings, when you come to the podium, please give your name and your address, and you will have two minutes to present your comments. 
and if someone else has comment uh, has uh, time that they wish to comment and they want to share it with the other person they can do so but they must come up and give their name and address before they do so in sharing them with that I will open the public hearing on item number one uh, the May Old Shelbyville Highway Minor Subdivision Plat at 521 Old Shelbyville Highway as printed in pages 6 to uh, 11. Hello, yes, sir. I'm Chris Bateman. I'm the land surveyor on this project. Your address? 521 Woodsley Road, Tallahassee, Tennessee. Thank you very much. We were just, uh, Steve May was just dividing a portion of this property off. Just, I believe, we're going to sell it to one of his neighbors. And that's, that's the idea here. If you can see, the, see it on you. I got a question on track one. That's where his residence is, correct? Yes. Yeah, track one's got his house on there. He's rezoning that or just making it? No, he's not rezoning. He's, he's just not rezoning. He's just, just separating. He's, just, he's taking a, there's like a, a, I can't remember if it's like a four tenths of an acre. Two tenths. Two tenths. Yeah. Taking it and combining it to his, the lot that has his house on it. Then he's, uh, cutting the larger lot into two where the lot stretches from uh, road frontage from uh, Wilson Avenue all the way up to Old Shelbyville Highway. He's cutting off track two to make a separate lot on Old Shelbyville Highway. Then he's taking a, a, that small piece and adding it to his existing lot or the lot that is with his home on it. And then the large track of 10 acres is gonna be left on its own and in front on Wilson Avenue. So there will be a right of way from <coughs> Old Shelbyville Highway to track three. Correct. That's correct. That track two is not very big to put a house on, as far as wide. It meets the criteria for it to do that. I know it meets the criteria, okay. but it does not meet <clears throat> aesthetically. It does not meet how those houses look down through there. Do we have any guidance on that, or say so? No, I don't think we have anything. Like All those houses down there, there's about four of them and they um, have road frontage. How many feet would you think, Scott? There's a bunch. Yeah, there is a bunch. But the, you know, the distance between the house, the last house coming back towards um, Wilson Avenue on Old Shelbyville Highway and where that track two begins and where he's cutting into track one, that's awful tight. I mean, I wouldn't put a house there. I mean, it may, it may meet what the specification and the law says, but, you know, you have um, the May house there, the next house over is the Posey house, next house over is the uh, Burnett house, and then um, two more houses, and they all are, you know, probably five acre lots maybe, or four. Well, look at, lot, look at, is this picture currently that we're looking at? You're talking about the aerial photograph? Aerial photograph. Yeah, it, well, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a few years old, so it's, it's not like, uh, I'm sure it's probably a little bit different. I was right going to say the frontage looks a lot like that third house frontage to me. I'd like to know what that third house for the frontage is, length-wise. If you look at uh, on page 10, the uh, little triangle lot there, that 129, is that the house? Is it Looks like. Yeah, there's a house on that lot. You're talking about on page 11? Okay. Yeah, page, page, page 11. 11. And then if you and look at the first the house of, of those four line. houses, that one's on yeah. a very thin you can see the, You can see the shape of that lot better on page 10. 
on 129 has a house on it, and that's the next house is up is the Neely. 27. Yeah. And then if you look at 126, that lot's real narrow too. Well, but those houses have trees and stuff in it. When you come down and it looks like that's a neighborhood, you know, initially that's what I think what that was supposed to be, you know, they were gonna make that a whole big neighborhood. But, you know, Mr. May, I think, bought the, all that property and then, or the po property that's behind and he's decided to develop it. If you take, if you if you look at page, page ten, if you take if you take one twenty nine, one twenty seven, one twenty those out across the street, one thirty, Mr. Stewart's got a, a big, you know, big piece of property. But you know, I guess you could put a house in there on on that that he's wanting to make track one, and it meets you know the specifications. But you know. 251 is the property we're talking about, Lee? Uh, 251 is the uh, uh, lot that has his home on it. Yeah. Okay. But the large lot doesn't have an address yet. Okay. That's the one he's creating track two and track three out of. And that's a lot of ground back there. Yeah. It's narrow and long. You have a good point. I'm just aesthetic, you know, aesthetically it's just you know, you have on page 11, 251, 341, 395 is um, got a lot, but I mean, it's deep. It's deep, and that that first one would be deep too, I guess. You know, 395. I'd like the measurements of the 395 frontage and. You know, you got one that's 251 is has a certain distance fronting 130, and then it widens out. There's a lot of frontage on the Posey Place, and then the Turner Place and um, Tuck Place is 431 because that tree died. And it looks gone. like they've got the same amount of road frontage as far as Track One, Track Two, uh, 124 feet. And Track Four would, I mean, Track. Not track 395 probably mm -hmm. has about the same. What do we have to decide today, Chairman? Uh, we're deciding on whether the, we will allow the subdivision of. It's supposed to create two new tracks from an existing track and adding property to a second existing track. Um, shown in track, it will divide two existing tracks, track two and track three on the plat. And combining 10,000 square foot portion into tracks two and three to track one. So if you look at it now, I mean, I drive by there four times a day, so I'm, I'm, I'm very familiar with the property and how it looks. You know, if track one and track two were kept together, that looks more like what that section, how they developed it. 395 might be an outliner, but 431's definitely got plenty of road frontage, and the and the next property going towards Motlow would be the parish property has a, a lot of road frontage too. I just think it would look weird to to bust that up. You know, he, he's making track one, but you know, I just think it looks goofy. How did he add the property to track one? That's the only one I don't know. I can see how he took track two over here 
and basically turn track three into it, it'll turn track three into almost a flag log, right? Basically, you got track two and track three, and there's a section in between track two and track three. Mm -hmm. That's the part he's cutting off and adding to track one. Ah, oh, okay. Track. Why is that? That little piece right behind track two? Uh, that's what he, I guess he's what he. I mean, that looks just kind of strange. Why don't you just go straight back to track three, I wonder? Well, because there, I mean, you've got an easement. I guess he's thinking. Oh, is that an easement? easement? Well, there's an easement coming off of, uh, there's a right of way easement, right? Coming well, off of Wilson. A, well, it's, it's got property that extends from Old Shelbyville Highway to Wilson Avenue. By doing it this way, you could, if you just have it one line, this is just an assumption. I don't know, I haven't asked you. To keep that from happening. It keeps somebody from recombining those lots and then creating a road. I got you. Yeah. I got you. And, I and the other that. thing, it, because the way he does it, he gives every lot a access to a road, to a well, public road. Right, but he just, he, what, what I think is the main thing is to keep a, a road being cut through that connects Wilson Avenue to Old Shelby Highway there. But if you do it the way, it'd be more complicated to try to get it back together than it would be if it was just two lots. Was 395 subdivided off 431 or 341 at one time? It, it looks so much different than the other yeah. large tracks. So I would thought I remembered one time that being subdivided somehow off another lot there. But in looking at 395, it looks, it actually looks smaller than the track number one. I mean, yeah, it does. Because it goes back narrow, whereas track one kind of gets wider where those houses would be there and if you go down a couple to that 126 lot that looks a lot smaller than either one of these two where's 126 126 is right here scott it's oh. it, it's in the picture it's this little bitty house right oh, okay. here okay yeah. well there's precedence for those little lots that's been the you know that that's that's there the, 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 what I'm trying to do is make sure all these look about the same. If you've set a house in there, that to me looks a little bit different. But the other argument on that is 395, it's narrow too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so that, I mean. But I mean, his, he's going to have hit that lot line right up next to his driveway within 10 feet. That's how it looks like it's surveyed. Yeah, cuts into that. I wish you'd have just left track one with that track two in track one. But now, stack, staff recommendation is. Uh, we gave it a favorable recommendation because it meets the uh, standards of the. Meets all the standards for score footage and everything. Well, this is not really a subdivision per se, correct? Well, a subdivision, its definition is was cutting one lot off from another lot. So, I mean, it can just a subdivision can be just two lots. Right, but this is not a subdivision with the um, rules or regulations or anything like that. Well, no, not like a major subdivision where you had well, our major subdivision is just five or more lots, but. You know, not with a new road, or, or what most people would construe as a subdivision as a development, like you know, Emerald Meadows or something like that. No, it's not a you know, it's a minor subdivision. So, is there anybody else to speak to this? All right, thank you. With nobody else speaking I'll make, up, I'll make just one comment and to address your your point. Can you save it till after we have a motion and second, or sure? Will it mess things up? I thought we were in the discussion mode. I didn't know. No, this is not this is not our discussion mode. This is a public hearing, which is different. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> to be mean Ray <laughs> please okay I will close the public hearing now uh, we can entertain a motion as to whether to send a favorable recommendation 
no, no, you're approving this. Oh, oh we approve this is. one. This is one of those we have the authority yeah, to approve. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so we can we can entertain a motion to approve this subdivision request the way it is. Do I have a motion? Gentlemen, we have to make some movement somewhere. Mr. Chairman, I, I think it's a bad policy to uh, prohibit a, uh, to any discussion among the group prior to a motion being made. And I think that's the reason you're not getting the motion is because I don't think we've discussed it to the point that anybody's wanting to make a motion. And it's not against Ruth, Robert's Rules of Order to have a general discussion concerning this issue. According, you, to, according I take point to the to the fact that according to the training we received you don't hold commission discussion until after you have a motion in second well yeah. I don't think that's right the rules of order uh, you can have a discussion about any agenda item you want to and then following that discussion you can have a motion and then you can have discussion on the motion per se but right now what we're wanting to do is discuss the issue that's brought before us in preparation to making a motion. And, th and in that case, you I think you should allow Ray to say what he wanted to say now. It was, you, you were entirely correct I, in I saying that. I didn't disallow him. I simply asked him if he could wait. And, 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 and so now I think it's the time. I'm agreeing with that. But I'm thinking now's the time for him to make his comment. Because we're honestly, we're not supposed to speak in the public hearing. We're supposed to yeah, hear I from agree the with public. That. I agree with that, but I think now's the time for him to make his comment. Feel free to make any comments you want. <laughs> First comment I'll make is I sat here and listened for 15 minutes to a discussion. Yeah. Were you asked any questions during that time? No. No. We were having a discussion. I go to ask a question, I'm cut off. Yes, I was offended. I want you to know that I was offended. I'm now, sorry. make my comment. It's a beautiful area we're talking about right there. Some of the prettiest homes in Tullahoma. Attractive, you might call them estate lots. Uh, some of this, this borders on changing that borders on. Certainly there's room for question about the way this has been divided and what you might put on these lots as opposed to what is there now. So that's why you may not have gotten a motion to approve. Thank you. And I didn't mean to offend you. Sorry. I have I have a question, Jim, Mr. Chairman, and I don't. I'll address this question to either you or to uh, the coach director. But uh, this is as as Mr. Lawson stated, in compliance with our existing rules. My question is, do we have the authority to reject it based on aesthetics rather than the rule of law? And I'm basing that question on some of the training that we previously had concerning a person's right to take something to court and what the court may rule. Uh, Mr. Lawson, really can thing. you answer that question? The way that it was explained to us when uh, we had the training was that if it meets code, we we're supposed to we're supposed to approve it. Why well, have a board? Then. You don't need us. Yeah. Well, go now. That's the reason I raised the question because I remembered it that way, but I don't know if if, if that's the way I, I would prefer it to be. No. Unless uh, our our charge and duty, from what I know, is I mean we can take recommendations from whoever. But that does not mean we have to accept that recommendation. And that's been not only from codes, from whatever. 
we've had many discussions in my last few years on the board of stuff that comes from codes <clears throat> and we've had to decide as the, the board whether we were going to give it up or down you know. you, you're you're treading on. I mean, you don't have to take my recommendation, but this is a recommendation or, or what we were discussed with a land use attorney, right? Who knows case law? Who's been doing this for years in the state? And he advised us that if it meets the code, then we're supposed to approve it. Now, if we don't like the rules in the, as far as the code, we can change, change it. We just do it. We with subdivision regulations, we can change the rules just from the planning commission. It doesn't have to go to the board of mayor and all. So, so, so if, if you rewrite something to say that you can approve or not approve based on aesthetics, yes, but this came up not long ago with you, Scott, because you asked about well, the I was front questioning of, uh, about those houses down country club. Exactly. What kind of houses it would be? Yeah, and what would were the, they going to be vinyl siding? Fronts or uh, would be. Brick you know, or? then I was told we can't decide what they're going well, to be. Well, aesthetics of single family homes, no. So that's kind of different than. I guess lot size. lot size but you know and then we were told they were going to be brick homes which I'm proud to hear but you know that's a shame we can't yeah control. right now we don't have any rules in our system that allow us to to judge up or down based on aesthetics that's not in a part of it if, if they meet the required sizes we have been required to approve now if we want to rewrite the wording then somebody will have to sit down and work out how they want to rewrite that wording to do so Lee what if what if this comes to us with your recommendation and you don't get a motion to approve you don't get a motion it does. It does. No, it doesn't. No, it You've doesn't. Approve it within sixty days, or it's automatically approved by state law. Why? Why? Why are we needed then for this? And, well, that's a good question of whoever wrote the state law. I'm just, I'm just, you know, I'm the messenger here. I'm just telling you what it states. Say that again, please, about the sixty days. If it, if we don't, if there's not a motion made on this on this plat within sixty days, then it's automatically approved. By who? Uh, the state, state says law. it's automatic proof, meaning they can go to the register of deeds and have it recorded. So, okay, I'll ask another what if. What if a motion is made to disapprove and it passes? Then what happens? Then it's disapproved. Yeah, then it's turned down. You can make a motion to disapprove it. Now, they have the right to appeal your decision to the Board of Mayor and Alderman. That answers my question. So we would have to make a motion and then vote to disapprove it for it to go any further. If we didn't even make a motion, it, it, it'd be approved automatically. In 60 days? Yes, in 60 days. Interesting. Because we have to have some movement, you can't just leave it laying and not do anything. Somebody's got to make a decision. That's what they pay us the big bucks for. <laughs> so where we are right now is we need a motion to, to either approve or disapprove. I make a motion to either approve or disapprove this uh, May Old Shelby Old Highway <laughs> Minor Center. Which way are you making the motion? I, I make a motion to disapprove it. I'll second the motion. I have a motion and second to disapprove this request for subdivision on the minor subdivision on Old Shelbyville Highway item 7B1 in our package. Do we have any further discussion? Hearing no further discussion, I'll proceed to the vote. All those in favor of disapproval say aye. Aye. Uh, those opposed, no. That'd be me, no. And the ayes have it. So we will move on to the second request. 
This is another open public hearing. The Austin Wiseman Road Minor Subdivision Final Plat 211 oh, Final Plat on 211 Wiseman Road as put in pages 12 through 17. And I will ask this time that all the panel hold their discussion until it's time for us to discuss and then we'll move on. This is a public hearing and it is open for those who wish to make comment. I'm Chris Bateman, 521 Woodsley Road, Tom, Tennessee. And I'm the surveyor on this one as well. And this is a simple minor division dividing off to one piece from another. And it should aesthetically meet everything around it. We have somebody else that wants to speak, I think. Yes, ma'am. I'm Yale Alston, 211 Wiseman Road. I'm the owner of the property. This is very hard. We've lived there eight and a half years. We keep our property spotless. We've never had the city have to know the side of the road, ditches or anything. My husband's very particular with it. We've got, I think it's about a little less than 1.6 acres. But almost three years ago, he had a heart attack, and he's had seven blockages stented. This time last year, he had shoulder surgery, and now he's pending, he's 65, he's pending a knee surgery. And we've decided that to be able to keep up the other 0.73 or whatever acres that go with part with our house, that we're going to need to sell this back because he is in the middle of chest pains again, possibly pending another heart attack. And I had to make this decision that we were going to sell this for my husband's health. So I just want everyone to know we, we love our land. When Mr. Thomason built about four years ago, he bought all the property joint and ours. And then the lady that bought down next to um, the pine trees where I think it's the city Polk Street, she just sold all the back joint and ours. And we didn't want to do this, but it's, it's, a health issue right now with my husband and I promise the other point seven something will still be kept just like it's been for eight and a half years thank you thank you any other further public comment from anyone hearing none I'll close the public hearing and I will open for a motion on the approval of this subdivision move to approve second i have a motion and second to approve this subdivision of property on uh, item 7b2 austin wiseman road subdivision uh, and i have no discuss no further discussion all those in favor of approving say aye. aye aye those opposed no motion carries we come to the final piece the woodland space two major subdivision preliminary plat mr chairman if i may my my plats are completed i just like to address the board here that as a resident, as a resident, once you start telling people they, they, can't, they can't sell property that they own, you're creating an injustice to the people that you serve. Okay, this will be a public hearing once again on the Woodlands Phase 2 Major Subdivision Preliminary Plot on Ovoca Road and the public hearing is now open for comment. Hello, my name is Andy Best. I live at uh, 273 Haynes Hall Road in Winchester. I'm the land surveyor uh, who is uh, doing this division. Uh, this property is on, uh, it fronts on Avoca Road and also on Riley Creek Road. Um, 
the interest of the subdivision that we're doing. It's uh, off of a Boca Road. There are 45 lots uh, between Emerald Meadows and Somerset Estates. Um, the, uh, the, the developer is wanting to put brick and rock sided stucco and brick, rock and stucco sided houses in there. Uh, 1,500, 2,000 square foot houses. Are there, any, this, oh, go on, sorry. are there any <laughs> public comments from anyone else? Hey. Hearing none, I'll close the public hearing and I'll entertain a motion on this request for subdivision. <clears throat> well, Mr. Chairman, I'd like uh, Dr. Blanks with the uh, old Shelbyville Highway. I'm very familiar with this piece of land and the road that passes by it. Uh, as you said, this backs up onto Somerset. Autom autom it's, it, it, it's bounded on the south by uh, Emerald Meadow subdivision and yeah. it's bounded on the north by Somerset Estates. Somerset. This is not backs up on that. Uh, <clears throat> I commend that any developer for tackling a, a job like this, an asset to the community. I want to say that to start with. The issue that I uh, bring to your attention here, I don't know how familiar you are with that road there. Uh, I drive it daily. Uh, and as you're coming from south to north toward town, the road from Somerset is right at the crest of a hill there. And regularly, almost every day, I have to brake there for traffic entering the street there because as they pull up there, they can't see very well what's coming. Uh, there's been more than one accident there. Uh, this entrance to Ovoca Road is in a worse location. It's after you go over the hill and down the hill is where that enters the road there. So the, as it looks like, it says that for an average house, you have like nine trips a day from a from a house like that. So 45 times 9 is a bunch of entrances and exits there off of that road at that location. There's got to be a better way, perhaps on, I know that on, uh, I know that on Riley Creek Road, there's a, it's a fairly flat section on that side of the subdivision. Much more visibility for entrances and exits for highways. <clears throat> so that is a very dangerous situation that you're putting onto that two-lane road right there. Now, when Emerald Acres was proposed and approved by our board, Dr. Blanche, if you'll remember, three years ago I opposed that division because of the intersection at Riley Creek Road and Ovoca Road, the Y. It's one of the most dangerous intersections in town and more accidents happen there. We're proposing to put 180 houses in that Emerald, Emerald Acre subdivision. Adding that times nine is a bunch. I was told then that, well, city engineers looking at that intersection to improve that. That was three years ago. There's not been a gravel turn. There's not been one thing done to change that situation now. And we're compounding it now with 45 more homes nine trips a day through that intersection. Last fall, a car came around, over, came up Riley Creek Road, didn't make the turn, flipped over into a yard. <clears throat> Two weeks ago, a car came up that road, didn't make the turn, and didn't straighten up and off in another yard on the opposite side. I've been run off the road there twice over into a ditch because getting out of the way of traffic. So until that traffic situation is improved there, I will oppose any development there that hinders that until that traffic situation is improved. When there's this came before us one other time, and they were going to put a connector to Riley Creek, right? Uh, because I think, the, I think like back when it was first, you know, they were going to do all three of those subdivisions together. It was going to be. Uh, I think I it was Mr. Doug Dale that brought it, and it was originally supposed to have a connection between Novoca and Riley Creek Road. Right. I remember there was an issue with the fire department, you know, saying they wanted to 
Then connect all the through. way to Riley Creek. And, uh, you know, so that was brought to the table, was it not? Yeah, I mean, it, it was, and then there was some kind of issue with some of them. They were worried that it was going to be a cut through road or, or something. I, that, I was just reading the, the minutes from back yeah. when the preliminary was going through the first time. Um, the way I remember the discussion we had when that previous one was approved is that uh, I think the city engineer was here at that meeting, if I remember correctly, and he said that they were going to just square that up, and if they were to do that, it would it would go a long way towards alleviating the problem, because then you could pull up to the intersection and easily see both ways. You it's can't do that now. Yeah. A guy like me that's got a bad that's neck with a stop sign is, is in a. Uh, a a bad situation trying to look back over a shoulder like that. And they have that whole point to work yes. with right there. Yeah, and, and it could easily be yes. uh, put a different radius on it there exactly. where it comes in square to the road and, and like Ray said, put the stop sign. Yeah. And, and, you know, I hate to, to put the burden, as Ray's talking about, on the developer, but there should be some way that we can insist that that happen well, without didn't you that, say three years ago they were yeah. looking at it? It was about, the first, well, I've first year that I was on the board. Two to three it years came ago. came from the Planning Commission, and I mm. opposed the development at that time for that very reason. Yeah. It passed. <clears throat> it had not been any, and it, I was told at that time that the city commissioner, city engineer, was looking at changing that intersection. It has not been touched. It has not been done anything to and until something is done to improve safety in that stretch of road at that particular intersection and this compounds it, I will, well, will not well, Mr. approve it. Mr. Lawson, is there any way we have any authority to force someone to look into making that happen? I, I mean, you can make a recommendation. I, I think the only the Board of Mayor Harvard, as far as when it comes to city spending can, money. Can we make a... a pass a motion to recommend to the uh, Board of Mayor and Alderman that they take that action. Yeah. Uh, contingency on it to where we would approve it if they would take care of that intersection. Well, one thing we can do, we cannot approve this subdivision until it's done. I think the developer would well, have a I, lot of influence that on making be, that happen. I think we put an, an undeserved uh, burden on the developer if we do that. Yeah, but but I, I really think we should you, take it, some action it's, it's to, make, like to try to make it happen. It's like you're saying, okay, because because we as a city won't do this, you can't do what you want to do with right. your land. And that's not really... But to me, it's not a big deal. Do. That's not something that's difficult to do. Now, mm -hmm. you may have to condemn a little property there right. in order to do it. And they're not going to use that property for right. anything else. Yeah. Uh, I do know Bill that. Bill doesn't address the issue of where we the exit on the local road. Like okay. Andy was trying to say. Something. I do know that that property at the corner has recently changed hands. I have been contacted about working with uh, subdividing that, and I talked to the developer who has bought that, and he is willing to convey whatever the city needs to make it happen, as was the previous owner. But the previous owner, uh, I guess that it never happened. But I do know that both of even the previous owner and the current owner are willing to convey land to the city to make it happen. It's probably the most dangerous intersection in town. I agree. I come through there every day. I think we should try to work out some method of making this happen without putting the burden on the developer to make it happen. And that will be, that's the number one <coughs> worst intersection in town. This is the second one that they're creating here with, over this hill. Yeah. Lee, I'm trying to read this comprehensive transportation plan. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> and and I'm really having trouble figuring out what they're. I, I I understand what they're talking about trips and how the trips have increased, and to me it obviously looks like they've already exceeded the level of service on the road that they're supposed to have. I guess that section right there before the intersection. Is the, it would be the segment that would that was what they're proposing isn't going to drop the level of service just by the road by the traffic of, or the trips uh, that's going to be generated. Uh, what we've got here though is, is a situation of more the, 
not addressing actually trips. It's actually talking about the physical condition as far as he's talking about a vertical curve that's that you can't you know you can't see over and then mm -hmm. cause a credit issue with people trying to pull in and out of that subdivision onto Avoca and then you just got the the situation with the intersection itself. The design of it is uh, creates a hazardous situation. You know, when once you start adding over 400 new trips to it, you know, that, that, <laughs> so it's it's a design situation here. That's, that's the main issue, not really the trips. It bothers me to have to go through the two most dangerous intersections in town every day. It just looks to me like e even it, but even in the issue of trips, the trips have gone up. I mean, it, it looks like the level was supposed to be at like about 5,100 maxed out, and it's running and it's going to run like 5,600 you know, to. That's just the level of service. Usually, studies have been done. The, usually, the most acceptable is a level a level of service of C. Uh, right there, they're at a B right now in that section. But that's just for trips. That's just counting trips. That's not also taking consideration other aspects of how you would the design the of service of the road. Yeah, the design of the the road and stuff. I wish they'd just give us a thumbs up or a thumbs down though, so we could at least know for sure. But yes, sir. Why is that information given to us here? Well, is that information? What, is it level it's A, level B, level C? Why we've got that? What are we going to do with it? Why, well, we have a like, comprehensive transportation plan. It's the same purpose. It's to give information. You should try to give out as much information as I possibly can to make so people I'm not, make it, I, I'm, uh, I'm a, a decision. I'm wondering what to do with it. Well, it allows you to know what, what's, being, what's going to be added to that's already there as far as the trips. If it's going to be something where it levels decreases the level of service to like a D, then you're not going to want to approve it because it, unless they're planning on we have something in the copper or the uh, capital improvements plan ready to deal with that particular situation. A lot of other communities use it as a, a way to leverage developers putting in turn lanes, either center turn lanes or, or right hand turn lanes just so the traffic can still keep moving without having to stop for everybody pulling in and out of that subdivision. So if you had a D service level, you put in a term lane, you might move it up to a C. You could prevent it if it's, if it's right there at the at the threshold, if you required it. And, and it also depends on the amount of stacking that's going to go into those term lanes as well too. Like if you can stack two or three, uh, <clears throat> it's kind of like okay I got this much square footage and I'm supposed to have this much square footage well it's the same thing with traffic I got this much traffic I'm supposed to have this much so yeah but that's just one of the two fixes you know fixing that triangle area there at Riley Creek and Avoca is one but if you put that entrance to this subdivision back there where Ray was talking about, you come over that hill, you got boom, boom. Two, two tar you got two targets. You got one now, you add the other one there. Okay. But wonder, can we, wonder why but it didn't can we actually say we're going to penalize the developer and not allow his plat to be approved because we're not fixing a road? No. I'm talking about this intersection right there. That one right there. I understand. It would be it would be safer to be coming in off of Riley right Creek, wouldn't it? It'd be much safer off Riley Creek because it's flat and it's, you can see forever. Have y'all looked at that, Andy? I, I've, I've actually discussed that with the developer, and uh, his concern was if it was a double entrance, then it would be people would be cutting through there. Um, Mother trying to walk their children uh, would be driving too fast. Yeah, oh, we drive back one, entrance, one right. entrance off of Riley. Um, the I actually proposed that to him too, and he said, "Well, the properties on Avoca are higher value than the properties on on Riley Creek, so I would rather have an entrance off of Avoca to keep my property values up." It's called raping the road truck. Yes. 
this, this, this uh, country club I, drive. I, I, can, that. That. I can understand that. I say yes. yes. It just yes. where I put my entrance at is going to make five thousand dollars difference in forty five different homes. That's a lot of money. Mm -hmm. And it's probably going to make more in that difference, regardless of the danger that you present. First, do no harm. This is the rule in my business. You ready for a motion? Either way. I'll make a motion to disapprove. I have a motion to disapprove. Do I have a second? Second. I have a motion and second to disapprove the Woodlands Phase Two preliminary plat as presented to us in the packet on the pages 18 through 24. 24. Uh, I think we've had pretty much all the discussion, so I'll proceed to the vote. All those in favor of disapproving, say aye. 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 Those opposed, no. 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 So it's three to, so it's, the ayes have it. So, with that in hand, uh, no amendments to the public hearings, uh, no other new business. Our next meeting will be Monday, November 19th of 2018 at 4.30, and I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Mr. Mr. Chairman, adjourn. before we adjourn, I still like to make the statement that regardless of whether we approve this uh, uh, subdivision or not, I think as a planning commission, we are derelict in our duty if we don't do something to force that, that uh, uh, Y intersection down there to change. And, in, and since there's nothing else to do, I make a motion that we recommend to the Board of Mayor and Alderman that action be taken in the very near future to, to correct that problem at that intersection. I'll second that motion. Uh, can't do that. It's not on the agenda, if so I don't know if it's. How did we get it fixed? Yeah, just yeah, maybe amended or another new business or something. You can just put it down. We yeah, we can put it in other new business. Okay, so we have a motion and give the wording to. to recommend to this board of mayor and alderman that they take immediate action to fix that hazardous condition at the intersection of Riley Creek Road and Avoca Road. Okay, and we have a second from which one? Me. You? Okay. So we have a motion and second to send a recommendation to the Board of Mayor and Alderman to take action to correct traffic issues at Ovilka Road and Riley, Riley Creek, Creek Road. And the all those in favor of sending the recommendation, say aye. Aye. Say aye. Those opposed, no. The motion passes as part of other new business. Lee, is that, that um, Riley Creek Road a state road? No, no, neither one of those are state roads. Okay, good. Just uh, they'll they'll have to rearrange some stuff on the capital improvements program, but I mean, it is what it is. I mean, you're gonna get the land for free. Why not just yeah, they're willing to give the land. So that's okay. a big that's a big part of the puzzle. We're gonna just turn that road. Just turn it. You know, get it out of that curve. Right. Okay. No other new business. And I entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. I have a motion and second to adjourn this meeting of the Telehoma Planning Commission. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, no. Aye. Meeting is adjourned. Get the phone calls.